John 4.23, uh, probably not going to stay there, but I just was throwing some scriptures down this morning. I had a general idea of where I'd like to go today, but putting the scriptures with it might be another thing. But John 4.23 says, The Father seeketh such to worship Him. The Father seeketh such to, to worship. And what was that? True worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So the Father is seeking worship. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't often think, you know, people think of worship as singing and, you know, and that's all good. And, but it's how, how your life is, how you live your life is descriptive of whether you worship God or not. It, it, it's descriptive or it shows, it, it expresses your worship of God and how you live your life. Uh, whether you live it according to um, the commandments of God or, or His influence in your life. And verse 24 says in that same uh, chapter that God is spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Or they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit. God is a spirit. <clears throat> and I think it's, it's quite easy for a Christian to forget that what's first in life, what leads, should lead our lives. It should be the Spirit of God that should lead our lives and not the flesh or not, not attitudes of the flesh. Matthew 6 says, 6.37 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And that's, you can go on from there, but to, to seek first the kingdom of God. That's what our primary goal is in this life is to seek first the kingdom of God. And you get tested on that. You get to test on whether what are your priorities. Are your priorities right or are they not? And you get tested on that every day. You get, whether they're little tests, big tests, doesn't make any difference. Is At some point, you're going to get checked out. <clears throat> you're going to get checked out. You're going to get checked out whether you've got your priorities right or not. And so they that, the Father seeketh such to worship Him. They that worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. God is spirit, and they that... And, but God is spirit, and in Matthew 6.30 says, Seek first the kingdom of God. And Matthew 7.7 7 says um, that what you seek, you find. Is what you seek, you find. <clears throat> Luke 9.10 says, for, uh, for the Son of Man cometh to seek and to save that which is lost. You see, God, here is Jesus. He's available today, and he's seeking to save that which is lost. Are you lost today? <laughs> Are you lost today? Have you lost, uh, lost in the sense of the flesh doesn't rule your life? That no longer does the flesh rule. You see, I like to think that I'm lost today. If I think that I got it all together, then, I, then my pride is in control. <laughs> Amen. I'm going somewhere with this. I just haven't not got it. We're not got, we haven't gotten there yet. So, <clears throat> so he comes to seek and to save. Anytime you think you have it all together, watch out. <laughs> Amen. Because <clears throat> the whole re you know the relationship with Christ is 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 premier we talk about trials and working on the flesh and and god setting us free but what's the purpose of it? why does god want to set you free why does he want you set free be set free from the flesh what's the, what's his purpose trials you know are just that they they show you priorities show you what's what where your priorities are and what you're influenced by. What's your priorities and what you what you're influenced by. But here it says, for the Son of Man that's come to seek and to save that which is lost. <clears throat> to seek and to save that which is lost. I'm lost in the sense of I need Jesus. Amen. I need him every day. I need him every moment of the day. <clears throat> And I need him in every situation that I'm in. And I'm realizing that more and more every day. <clears throat> but that's his purpose, is to come and to, to seek us and to save us. Matthew 23, 7 says, 
Well, Matthew 23 is a little bit different. Here's, here's an attitude that God has towards his people. Matthew 23, 7, Jesus looking over Jerusalem said, How long have I desired you? How long have I <clears throat> desired you or to bring you even as a hen gather, gathereth her chicks under her wings? In other words, <laughs> that God wanted Jesus, or God, wanted Jerusalem. He wanted Israel. He wanted them to, to, to draw close to him, to seek him. They, but they would not. They would not have anything to do with it. And every time he'd send someone to him, to correct him, prophet, whatever, you know, and it says that, you know, he's, they would stone him. <laughs> Wouldn't listen. But here it is. Here's God's view. Here's Jesus' view of you today that he's there and available and he wants to bring you in close amen he wants to gather you together gather you to himself amen he wants to gather you to himself and when it talks about that that as a hen gathereth her chicks it, a bird is it uh, uh, it says a hen but it's a bird like a, as a rising in the air or a lifting itself um, from the plane and so too it is with Jesus that he wants to lift us, amen? Lift us from the flesh, lift us from a mundane life, you know, living life every day, and okay, what's, what's this life all about? He wants to lift us above that. He wants to lift us and take us to where he's at, amen? Where he wants to go as a hen. But it says it's like a bird as rising in the air, lifting, in other words, lifting you up. <clears throat> And lifting it, and says lifting itself above the plane. And so that's 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 God's attitude towards His people. Amen. Even when they've done something wrong, even when they've fought against Him, He still desired to bring Israel. He looked over Jerusalem, said, "I still desire you. I still desire you to draw close. I still want to be have a relationship with you." And so it is with, with God, you know, um, you know, anybody can listen to this uh, via YouTube, but um, whatever your situation is, you shouldn't, shouldn't allow uh, guilt and condemnation to enter in because God is still there and He still desires you, amen? He still desires to come close to you. Yes, yeah, you know, if there are things in the past that need to be put in the past through confession, amen, and repentance, but God wants to draw close, amen, and he wants to bring you close. And he's on, in other words, he's on your side, amen. He's looking what he is doing in your life today. He is doing it, yes, to set you free, but the next step in setting you free is what? To have that relationship to him, with him. So there's nothing that would hinder your relationship with Jesus. Nothing. What hinders your relationship with Jesus? The flesh. He said, so <laughs> it's a big hindrance. When you live life in the flesh or for the flesh, where is God? Where is he? So in other words, to set us free, he has one purpose in mind, you see. God's attitude towards us. He is available. Jesus says that I'm here right now, and I'm available to each and every one of you. And we shouldn't take that for granted. What a great opportunity we have been given to live life, live this life with Christ. Amen? And to allow Him to come in and to live His life one more time through us. Amen? To reach the world. First of all, to reach us. He's got to reach us first. He's got to bring us to that point. It's kind of a, a, a two-sided thing. You have to have the relationship in order for Him to set you free. But then you have to allow the relationship, I mean, then it perfects the relationship.